The head of the World Health Organization in a passionate speech on Thursday said that the coronavirus is not under control in most of the world and is getting worse. COVID-19 pandemic has left no country untouched. It has humbled all of us. It's often said that disease knows no borders. It does not care about our political differences. And it disregards the distinctions we draw between health and economy, lives and livelihoods. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted them all. It has exploited the inequalities in our health systems and the schisms in our societies. It has exposed existing inequities, widening and deepening the cracks between us. This once-in-a-century pandemic has hammered home a critical lesson. When it comes to health, our destinies are intertwined. The virus has appended health systems in some of the world's wealthiest nations, while some countries that have mounted a successful response have been of modest means. We know that when countries take a comprehensive approach based on fundamental public health measures, such as find, isolate, test, and treat cases, and trace and quarantine contacts, the outbreak can be brought under control. But in most of the world, the virus is not under control. It's getting worse. More than 11.8 million cases of COVID-19 have now been reported to WHO. More than 544,000 lives have been lost. And the pandemic is still accelerating. The total number of cases has doubled in the last six weeks. Since this outbreak began, Led by our hero health workers, countries have worked around the clock to save lives, day and night. I will never forget the images of health workers who wore a mask for so long while on shift that they had marks, bruises imprinted on their face. And saving lives while risking their own life. And we have lost many health workers, actually. And also colleagues at WHO, moved by this, work, working tirelessly to coordinate the global response, to provide evidence-based scientific and technical guidance, catalyze research. And many of our colleagues said to me, our inspiration and energy can, comes actually from those in the front line who are fighting the COVID day and night, risking their lives. And that's why we work in WHO day and night. Everyone is fighting hard against the virus, but so many lives have been lost. But the health effects of the pandemic go far beyond the suffering caused by the virus itself. It's unraveling many of the gains we have made fighting some of the world's most devastating diseases. Hundreds of millions of children are at risk of missing out on routine vaccines for tuberculosis, pneumonia, measles, polio, cholera, diarrhea, and others. Many countries are running low on HIV medicines. Refugees are among the most vulnerable to the pandemic, already facing limited access to adequate shelter, water, nutrition, sanitation, and health services. COVID-19 could push them over the brink. And around the world, in countries rich and poor, many more people are now going hungry. We can see poverty visibly now. Of course, it has been there. With estimates from the World Food Program that global hunger could increase to more than 270 million people. These are not numbers, these are people. 
as countries struggle with this unprecedented threat, they face a delicate balance between protecting their people and maintaining essential health services while minimizing social and economic damage and respecting human rights. There are no easy answers. There are no quick fixes. But some nations have brought the virus under control. We must learn from their experience and follow their lead. As a global community, we must learn from both the positive efforts made to suppress the virus and the challenges that have emerged from this global hardship. It has been made devastatingly clear that the best defense against health emergencies is a strong health system. A strong health system is a resilient health system. That's why national governments and local governments need to invest in preparedness and essential public health functions. Universal health coverage is essential to our collective global health security. Health for all. That was the hallmark of WHO since more than 70 years ago is the answer. After every outbreak in recent history, there are lessons that we have learned to protect ourselves better. And the world has made some progress in pandemic preparedness. But it's also clear that we have much more work to do. For years, many of us warned that a catastrophic respiratory pandemic was inevitable. People from the health sector, even outside the health sector, many of our leaders warned about a catastrophic pandemic. It was not a question of if, but when. But still, despite all the warnings, the world was not ready. Our systems were not ready. Our communities were not ready. Our supply chains collapsed. It's time for a very honest reflection. All of us must look in the mirror. WHO, every member state, all involved in the response, everyone. We're in the midst of this battle, the battle of our lives. And we have to do better, not just now, but for the future. Because these threats will never stop. And in all likelihood, they will get worse. But it's in our hands. We make the choices. We need to look at the performance of our national surveillance and response systems, how we shared information with our communities, and whether we earned their trust, how we governed, and whether our global health architecture is fit for purpose. These are very important. But the most important is, are we ready to have an honest reflection? Each one of us, everybody, are we ready to learn the big lessons? And can we honestly do it? In May, as you know, the world came together for the first virtual World Health Assembly. And 194 member states passed a landmark resolution which recognized the leadership role of WHO and the role of the United Nations system in coordinating the comprehensive global response. It called on member states to implement a whole of government and whole of society approach to ensure a more coherent, fairer, and effective global response. It called for the fair distribution of vaccines, diagnostics, and therapeutics. In line with our call for after-action review, member states also agreed that WHO should initiate an independent and comprehensive evaluation of the lessons learned from the international health response to COVID-19. 
this is a time for self-reflection. To look at the world we live in and to find ways to strengthen our collaboration as we work together to save lives and bring this pandemic under control.